Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, 1987. Learn lessons about life and teenage love in the 1980s in this coming-of-age John Haynes story. Get your copy of John Haynes, 1987 in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Eight Las Vegas teenagers were charged with second-degree murder in connection with the alleged beating death of a classmate over a pair of stolen wireless headphones. Teens accused of beating and killing their classmate will remain in custody with no bail, and for now, they'll be held here at the juvenile detention center. We're also learning new details about what police say happened to Jonathan Lewis. Four of the teen murder suspects accused of beating their Rancho High School classmate Jonathan Lewis to death appeared in court Tuesday showing no emotion. Trayvon Randolph was represented by a special public defender and Gianni Robinson, Damian Hernandez and Dontrell Beaver all were represented by court appointed attorneys. He's 17 years old, he's very confused. His family is extremely concerned about what's going on. Criminal defense attorney Robert Draskovich is representing Robinson and told reporters after court, I've been told that the videos that have been released are incomplete and I'll be going through all the videos with my investigator to see what really happened. According to an arrest report obtained by Channel 13, when officers arrived at the crime scene, they found drops of blood located on some boards by the fence. The report also reveals a detective provided officers with a video of the fight, which had been posted on Instagram. Police say the video shows 10 people punch, kick, and stomp someone on the ground. And then the group turns their aggression on someone trying to break up the attack. Clark County School District administrators were able to identify for police several of the suspects leading to the arrest. Also, according to the report, a detective believes the fight possibly involved gang members. This is an ongoing investigation. As you can imagine, there were many, many people to interview that were there and other people that may have knowledge. Police say multiple people recorded the crime. Family members of the teen suspects pack the courtroom Tuesday. Channel 13, anything you guys could say to us? The father of Robinson had this to say about the court proceedings. Well, at least they're putting them back in juvie and not holding them down here with all the other people, all the other real criminals. Anything you want to say to the family of Jonathan Lewis? I'm sorry that happened, but you take a knife to a fight, that, that's what happens. Near Rancho High School, a makeshift memorial continues to grow in the alleyway where Lewis lost his life. The teens are back in court on December 14th. At the Clark County Juvenile Detention Center, I'm J1 Jung. Now, in this alleged incident that took place in an alleyway east of Rancho High School, 17-year-old Jonathan Lewis Jr. went with a friend to confront some individuals who had stolen a pair of wireless headphones and a possible marijuana vape pen from him. And as Jonathan Lewis Jr. sought to confront these individuals with his friend to retrieve these stolen items, he was ambushed by a mob of eight to 10 teenagers who brutally beat him. And as he was being brutally beaten, other students from the school were recording this beating and broadcasting and live streaming it to social media. And in the aftermath of the brutal beating that Jonathan Lewis Jr. received, he was taken to the hospital. And sadly, Jonathan Lewis Jr. did not recover from the severe beating he received. He passed away at 17 years old from numerous blunt force trauma to the head and the brutal beating that he received. And after Jonathan Lewis Jr. lost his life, eight to individuals were initially charged with second degree murder as related to his death, and a ninth individual was recently arrested and charged with second degree murder as well. Now, the Las Vegas police are seeing what happened to Jonathan Lewis Jr. as an isolated incident, but when I take a critical examination of all of the events that transpired with Jonathan Lewis Jr. that led to his death, 
They all fit the pattern and profile for beta males that I talk about in my book, The Man Crisis. Now, as I was listening to Jonathan Lewis's tragic story, it took me back to 1987 when I was in junior high school and had several incidents where individuals stole comic books from me. And in those incidents where I had comic books stolen from me, I tried to resolve the conflicts with those individuals and could not really resolve things with these individuals because these individuals, what they wanted to do was gain power over the situation by seeing me going out here and continuing to continue to get in their faces, demanding that they give these items back. And with these types of beta males, what they do is they steal an item in order to get the power over an individual and use the item that they have over the individual as a way to continue keeping a back and forth between them. And they do this because this is the only way these kind of individuals can have power because these individuals don't really have any sort of power and agency over their own lives. And because they don't have any sort of power or agency in their own lives, they hope to try to take an item a person has a personal connection with and use it as a way to manipulate them emotionally. This is what beta males learn in single mother households primarily when they see their mothers looking to manipulate men and they emulate this behavior in the hopes of trying to gain power over another individual, usually another male who they believe is weaker than they are. And they do this because they, again, feel powerless about their own personal situation. Now, these individuals, they don't want to go only go out here and take the item just for power. They also want to take the item in order to get attention for themselves because in many cases with these kind of beta males, these kind of beta males, they, get, they, they don't get much attention in their lives from their parents because they're not getting their emotional needs met. So they hope to get their emotional needs met by stirring up a lot of attention for themselves by starting some drama between them and another individual. And what happened here as related to the case of Jonathan Lewis Jr. is basically he got drawn into a situation possibly with a bullied kid who had brought these items to school. And as he brought these items to school, what happened is, is that these beta male bullies basically saw the items that he had and saw that he had a personal attachment to them. And as he saw that these items had a, per he had a personal attachment to them, they sought to take these items and hope to keep these items in a back and forth where they could have drama between them and this individual that they're bullying so that they could get the power that they actually wanted from the dysfunctional relationship they have with their parents. Now, Jonathan Lewis Jr., he went with his friend to try to retrieve these items that had been stolen from him, not understanding that the way you resolve this conflict is not by trying to go and deal with these individuals directly. No, the way you deal with these type of individuals is you have to go to higher authority figures such as law enforcement because the only way you can deal with these kind of individuals is to have law enforcement present. But I believe what happened here is that the friend was afraid of bringing law enforcement in because of the vape pen that he used to smoke marijuana with and because he was afraid of being punished for smoking marijuana, what would happen is he wanted he didn't want to be punished for that, so he hoped to try to resolve it in the way many bullied kids try to resolve things, by trying to go out here and trying to do it themselves, but you can't do it yourself. That is a lesson that every boy has to learn about manhood. No, you can't do certain things by yourself, when there are things like theft and stolen items, this is where you bring law enforcement in because law enforcement is the only organization that can deal with individuals who participate in theft. And I say law enforcement because 
School administration, really, in these cases, is absolutely useless. I know this from personal experience. School administration is just going to pat these guys on the wrist and not really give them any punishment. And the only way to make these individuals who are bullying an individual understand how serious the situation is, is that this person has to run into law enforcement and let them know that the stealing of these items is out of line and let them know where the hard boundary is. Unfortunately, Jonathan Lewis Jr. Did, and his friend didn't know that the only way you deal with individuals like this is through law enforcement and they tried to do it themselves and sadly as they tried to do it themselves what happens is they ran into a group of predatory beta males who went out here and ambushed them because this was as i believe a possible ambush the guy probably thought oh i'll go meet with these guys behind the alley to get my items back not understanding what these individuals were planning to do was an ambush and as they were planning this ambush, they were planning to attack every uh, Jonathan Lewis Jr. and his friend. And Jonathan Lewis Jr., sadly, was the guy who didn't know what was going on. He thought he was just going to help a friend, but there, but there was nobody to help him. And because there was no one there to help him, what he did was run into a situation with eight to ten individuals who brutally beat him up. And as they beat him and stomped him and kicked on him, what happened was really tragic was instead of people rushing to help Jonathan Lewis Jr., what happened was you had people taking out their smartphones and looking to record the entire incident and some possibly looking to live stream it on Facebook, seeing it as entertainment and not understanding that this was the life of a human being that was basically being snuffed out right in front of them. That is the great tragedy of this incident, which really mirrors what happened to Kitty Genovese in 1967, because back in 1967, Kitty Genovese, in here in New York, was being attacked by an individual, and as she screamed for help, nobody came to help her, and sadly, almost 60 years later, in our technologically advanced society, people would rather hold up a smartphone rather than push back on individuals who are ganging up on a teenage boy and beating him to death. That is the great tragedy of what happened as related to Jonathan Lewis Jr. Here's a 17-year-old boy who was just looking to do right by his friend who was being brutalized by all of these beta males who are just looking to get their power by breaking and destroying another person who they deem to be less than they are. And as they're looking to brutally beat this, this you know, teenage boy, they're looking to sate their feelings about, their, about the power that they have. And that's the great tragedy of this situation. A 17-year-old boy lost his life trying to defend a friend who was basically fighting over a pair of headphones and a vape pen, which had a value of under about $30 or $40. And this, man, this young man lost his life over items that I could easily find on Amazon.com for less than $30. That is the sad part of what happened here. Very similar to what happened to me almost in 1987, where I was fighting over these comic books and I didn't understand back then, just like Jonathan Lewis Jr. didn't understand, that these items have no value compared to that of your intangibles of manhood, such as your dignity, your self-respect, and your, and your most importantly, your freedom, and even more important, that your life. And in some cases, you just have to take a loss and let an item go in order to maintain your intangibles of manhood and most importantly, your life. That's what I learned back in 1987 when I was almost arrested over a Usagi Yojimbo comic book that, only, that I thought was going to be worth so much money. But the week after I had gotten into that fight, I, my brother it took me and my sister to the Forbidden Planet on 59th Street where I found the exact same comic book for two, the, the cover price of $2.00 and it registered, resonated a lesson to me that sometimes you just have to let an item go in order to preserve your life 
And sometimes you just have to, when you're dealing with toxic individuals like this, once you know what they are, what you have to do is just pull yourself away from those individuals. That was another lesson I learned back in 1989 after I had a jacket stolen from me on a train. I realized I had to walk away from these individuals like this and go to a place where I didn't have to deal with that toxicity. And sadly, that's the lesson, sadly, Jonathan Lewis Jr. didn't live long enough to, to um, understand. Or the kid who was being bullied, what you have to do is you have to move away from toxic individuals like this because there is no resolving conflict with these individuals because they will continue to escalate their dysfunctional behavior over and over again because for them it, and their quest for power, they are not going to be sated until a human life is destroyed like that of Jonathan Lewis Jr. That's what my mother wanted me to understand back in 1990 when she changed schools with me. These individuals do not stop. They're almost like the, like what um, Reese said about the Terminator, where they, there's no reasoning with them, there's no bargaining with them. They just do not stop. And the only way for things to stop is for you to leave these individuals because these children of the corn are the worst types of men in crisis and they're the worst type because again raised by single mothers they do not know how to conflict resolve and they don't want to resolve conflict because they like the attention that they're getting they like the power that they have because they feel powerless about their lives and the only way you can deal with toxic individuals like this is to leave them right where you find them. But sadly, Jonathan Lewis Jr. could not leave these individuals and his friend didn't know how to leave. The only way to solve the problem is to leave them. The only thing you can do with toxic individuals like this is to leave them right where you find them because these individuals are just extremely depraved and they don't know where the boundaries are because their mother never taught them boundaries. And they never taught them the written and unwritten social rules of manhood and can't teach them because a single mother can't teach you anything. And all they know what to do is violence. So the only way to deal with a beta male like this is to leave them and leave them right where they find them. And sometimes you have to make a sacrifice where you have to let something that you bought go because you have to value your life and your freedom more than whatever you had. I mean, a vape pen is, what, $10? A pair of headphones that are wireless are, what, $25, $30? I mean, I can take the loss on those things in order to preserve more important intangibles. And sadly, these boys didn't have a father or a man to sit there and tell them the way you resolve conflict with individuals like this when they are this insane, the only way to resolve the conflict is to walk away from these individuals and pull your kids out of these kind of schools because this is a toxic environment and it's a toxic environment that you cannot resolve on your own and you can't resolve anything with these kind of individuals who are just, again, some of the most twisted and depraved you will ever find. Now, these eight going on nine individuals who attacked Jonathan Lewis Jr., they are out here, they, they got sating their feelings about brutally beating this white male teenager, but many of these black and Hispanic boys who are now on the road to becoming men in crisis are now going to go from being students who were drifting through high school to going to become on the road to the, to the county jail to possibly, if they are convicted on these adult charges, winding up in prison for the rest of their lives, and they won't be the big, bad, tough guys in the group or the gang that they were a part of inside of the Nevada penal system, where they're not going to have to deal with apathetic school administrators. No, they're going to have to be dealing with hardened COs, and those COs are going to insist that they follow the rules of the county jail and eventually if they are convicted the penitentiary and when they get to the penitentiary they are not only going to have to submit to the authority of the COs there they're also going to have to deal with the social pecking order of Bubba, Tiny, Roscoe, Big Dave, Melvin and Mr. Sprinkles who are the ones 
who run the penitentiary. And as they run the penitentiary, these so-called hardcore thugs and street dudes who are the baddest guys on Las Vegas Strip are going to be stripped down and traded for Little Debbie snack cakes, Raymond noodles, packets of Crystal Light lemonade, packets of Crystal Light tea, off-brand fruit punch drinks, off-brand Oreo cookies, off-brand lemon cookies, off-brand duplex cookies, Fritos chips, packets of snack pack pudding, soy sauce, peppermint balls, tasty cake cupcakes, tasty cake honey buns. I mean, these guys are going to be broken down and spit roasted inside of the penitentiary and Mr. Sprinkles will be spraying special sauce all over these guys faces. Sadly, this is the fate that's going to happen to these males if they are convicted of these crimes and sentenced to life in prison, which is a possibility of happening highly because this was a white male who was murdered by allegedly by black teens. So this this group of males basically is fat on the fast track to prison and as they are on the fast track to prison I'm wondering if any of them are actually thinking about how much they have lost over a pair of a wireless headphones which cost less than twenty dollars on amazon.com and a vape pen that possibly costs less than ten these eight to nine males have basically thrown away their entire lives over items that can be found cheaply on Amazon.com. And that is the whole saddest part of this story about Jonathan Lewis Jr. A teenage boy lost his life over items that cost less than $30 on Amazon.com. And if you work for minimum wage, that's only two hours of work. A man lost his life on items that he could basically could have worked for for two hours at a job like Burlington Coat Factory for $15 an hour. And these eight males basically wound up losing their freedom for the rest of their lives over an item that cost less than, again, $30 on Amazon.com. When you think about this critically, it's just a really sad situation. We have 10 people who basically have lost everything, all because these males did not know how to think critically, did not know how to conflict resolve, did not know how to problem solve, and because these males were caught up in their feelings about power, they wound up losing two of the most important intangibles a man has in this world that God gives him. One is his freedom, which is the freedom and autonomy to go about living your life. And the other is your overall life that God has blessed you with. That is what has been lost in this whole situation as related to these males. These males basically wound up losing everything because they were caught up in their feelings. And again, they were caught up in their feelings about having power uh, because they didn't feel like they had power as men. And that's what put these males on the road to becoming men in crisis and, and wound up on the road to this great tragedy. I mean, this great tragedy is due to the dysfunctional way all of these boys were sadly raised. All The way all of these boys were sadly raised to, sent all of these boys on a great tragic road. One boy is dead. Nine others are on the road to prison where they will be humiliated by inmates inside of that penitentiary and never be the same. And all of this is due to the way we raise boys to become men. The way we raise boys to become men by going out here and reacting emotionally instead of thinking critically is what put all of these boys on the road to becoming men in crisis. And I was deeply saddened to hear what happened to Jonathan Lewis Jr. And it really made me at 50 reflect on everything that happened to me at 13. And I recently did a whole video on, on that whole situation that the Most High told me to do. He told me to talk about that whole situation in the hopes of helping another individual so that they would understand that you, your freedom is something you can't take for granted because that's basically what happened here. All of these males took their freedom and their life for granted and because they took their freedom and their life for granted, what happened was Jonathan Lewis Jr. is no longer alive 
and all of these other individuals are on the road to suffering for the rest of their lives because they're being charged as adult with second degree murder and being black teen and Hispanic teenagers who killed a white man, they are sure to go to prison for the rest of their lives. But this didn't have to happen because if these boys had been raised properly, they would be on the road to becoming men and not on the road to tragically becoming men in crisis. Now, if you want to learn more about what leads to males winding up making emotional decisions like this and winding up on a road where they wind up to becoming dysfunctional or winding up on a road that could possibly wind up with them losing their life or going to prison, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Man Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashworth, the iBookstore, Google Play, and Barnes and & Noble. And if you want to see what happens to bullied kids and how what happens when you go too far, you can pick up my book, John Haynes, 1987, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. This story will show you what happens to bullied kids when things go too far and the consequences of what happens when things go too far. Now, this was a video requested by one of my viewers, and if you want to request a video regarding the man crisis or any other topic, you can send a donation to the Cash App or the PayPal by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Godbreaker. The man who rules the world takes on the Asgardian God of Thunder in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get your copy of John Haynes, Godbreaker in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.